Welcome back to Agrosive Physics. Today is day three where we will discuss the metric system, accuracy, and precision. Well, what is the metric system? It's a standard used in physics where all measurements are based on the base 10 number system. It's a decimal system, which means that we can easily convert from one form to another. The base units for the metric system are length, time, and mass. Now length is measured in meters, so the meter is our standard for length. Mass is the kilogram, and that's how much mass an object has. It's different from weight, which is the pull of the earth on an object. Mass is typically defined in middle school as the amount of stuff that makes an object up. Um, it's a measure of the molecules that an object is made of. Your mass is constant no matter where you go in the universe, no matter where you go on the earth. Your weight, however, will change. Your weight on the earth is based on the acceleration of gravity on the earth. Your weight on the moon would be one-sixth that value because the moon has a smaller mass, has a smaller radius, it has a smaller gravitational pull. On the earth it's 9.8 meters per second squared and on the moon it's 1.63 meters per second squared. Notice I used meters and seconds in that unit. Well the second is our time unit. Now what's interesting to note is that the metric system which uses the meter, the kilogram, and the seconds, the seconds is the same unit as in the English system. Now the English system would be the miles, would be the slug for mass, and would also be the seconds. Now it's important to realize that seconds is going to be our base unit for all of our calculations. So if you have something in minutes, if you have something in hours, um, days, weeks, months, years, any value other than seconds, we're going to need to convert from that value into... Well in 1960, we added some values to the metric system. We call it the SI units, or the International System of Units. And what we did is added four more units to the three that were original, which was length, mass, and time. And those four new ones um, added up to a total of seven. And those are the seven basic units of the metric system. Every other unit that we deal with in this course will be a combination of those seven values. Some of the SI units we don't typically use in the, in the Regents Physics course or the Introductory Physics course, but as you study more physics over time, the other values will be more important. Now the four new values um, are current, temperature, amount of substance, and luminous intensity. Now current is an electrical unit. It measures the ampere, which is the unit for current. It's how much electrons flow, how many electrons flow uh, past a given point in a given amount of time. It will be useful when we talk about electricity. Temperature, the basic SI units um, or the metric units for temperature are Kelvin or Celsius and that's an absolute scale for Kelvin. Uh, it starts at zero and ends at, uh, well it ends as high as it can go, but also the Celsius unit can be used as well because um, they have the same uh, difference between degrees. Although Kelvin doesn't use degrees, it just uses Kelvins. Uh, in Celsius you have degrees Celsius, so the unit would be degrees in that case. Fahrenheit is not a metric unit. Um, it does not have uh, the standard difference between variables um, such as the Kelvin or Celsius, so we stick to the Kelvin and Celsius. If we need numbers that have to be positive, we'll use Kelvin. If numbers could be positive or negative, we'll use the Celsius scale. Now the amount of substance is the mole. Many of you coming from chemistry learned about Avogadro's number, 6.023 times 10 to the 23rd, and that's the number of atoms in a mole. That value allows us to count um, numbers in chemistry because we have so many atoms within a small sample. Now for dealing with kilograms, that's going to be quite a bit of moles. Now finally we have the luminous intensity, which is the candela. It is based on how bright an object is, and as you can tell from the value, um, the variable candela is based on how bright a single candle was uh, when the unit was defined. So a single candle had a certain value, one candela, 
and multiple candles would be brighter. Therefore, it would have higher values for candelas. Um, Loomis intensity is a value that we won't use in this course, but it does round out our top seven uh, for the metric system. So with length, mass, and time, we add current, temperature, amount of substance, and luminous intensity to have our seven basic units for the metric system. Now it's important to realize that while you were writing down the values, there is one value that has a prefix, and that's the value for mass. The kilogram is the only one that has a value um, that has a prefix. Now if you remember from chemistry or before, the kilogram, kilo, is 10 to the 3 or 1,000 grams. So a kilogram is an approximate mass of 1,000 grams, and it is defined originally as the mass of one liter of water at the freezing point. And that base unit um, was defined back in 1960. Now, speaking of prefixes, if we look on our reference table on the front page, we have a, a chart that lists the values for the prefixes that allow us to convert from one form to another in the metric system. It's cumbersome to write down a number of zeros after a value. So if we write one and then six zeros, that would represent a million. Well, instead of writing one and then zero, 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 we can re replace the zeros with one letter. And in this case, that would be the mega or the capital M. So if we write one mega meter or one mega gram or one mega second even, that would represent a million grams or a million meters or a million seconds. And what we're going to be able to do is take our values for mega and write it in shorthand in a problem. And then when we calculate it, we can either type in all the zeros in our calculator or we could use scientific notation and use ep exponents to save us time. Now the different values go in the chart from small to big and the values range from the pico to the nano to the micro to the milli to the centi, those are all less than one, to the kilo, to the mega, and to the giga for greater than one. Now the pico is 10 to the negative 12 and you'll notice a pattern here. The nano is 10 to the negative 9 micro is 10 to the negative 6, milli is 10 to the negative 3, the pattern is broken here, centi is 10 to the negative 2, and many of us will use centimeter rulers throughout the course, kilo is 10 to the 3, giga is 10 to the, um, I'm sorry, mega is 10 to the 6, and then giga is 10 to the 9. We have tera, which is 10 to the 12, and we have femto, which is 10 to the negative 15 as well, but on our chart we stop at pico all the way to giga. You notice that pico and nano and a milli and centi and even kilo are lowercase letters. Mega and giga are uppercase. Now there is one symbol that is not a um, basic letter in our alphabet, and that is a Greek letter a mu, and that is the micro. Um, so mu represents the micro, and that's 10 to the negative 6. So that's the only one that is a Greek letter in this prefix chart. Now that'll allow us to convert from one form to another without writing a lot of zeros after the number or leading zeros with a decimal. So if we were to write 0.001, um, we could replace that with one milli and whatever the unit is, millisecond or milligram or millimeter. Okay? Um, so the prefixes are used to uh, make our lives a little easier. We can avoid writing zeros either before or after the number. Um, and replace it with a single letter. And that's what makes the metric system so useful for us. Our conversions are done much uh, more simply. Now, as far as um, definitions, one of the things that we need to worry about in physics is using words that are used in everyday language that may have a slightly different meaning in physics or in science in general. And one of the combinations um, is accuracy and precision. Accuracy and precision are used in everyday language, uh, meaning the same thing. It means being right, typically. Um, people use it in everyday language and often misuse it if they're talking scientifically. Now, accuracy is a measure of how close you are to an accepted value. For example, if I'm trying to measure the acceleration of gravity on the Earth, then I get 10. Um, I'm about 0.2 meters per second squared off from our 9.8 value. Um, and 
some would call that fairly accurate. We can calculate the percent error, and we'll talk about that more later. That's more of a laboratory activity, but percent error is how far off you are from your accepted value. So percent error would be a measure of how accurate you are. The lower the value for your percent error, the better your accuracy. If there is no accepted value, what we'll typically do is take a trial of many, or an average of many trials, and calculate that average as our working accepted value. You may not have an accepted value in the lab if you're measuring the width of a desk or the mass of a certain uh, ball in the lab. However, if every student in the class measures it five times and we take an average of all those values, we can get a working accepted value. Other values that will be listed on the front page of the refer reference table are, are values that we're going to use for accepted um, generally in physics. Uh, acceleration of gravity, speed of sound in air, speed of light um, in a vacuum, speed of light in different materials. Those will all have uh, accepted values that are generally recognized by the physics community. Uh, in class, what might be a, an average of trials based on what materials you have in the lab or in the classroom setting. Precision, on the other hand, is how exact a value is. Now you may think accurate sounds just like exact. But exactness is a number of the significant figures that a measurement has. For example, if you're using a centimeter ruler, we can always estimate the final value. So if you're using a typical meter stick or a, a centimeter ruler, the smallest division is typically millimeters. And we're able to estimate that value past the millimeter um, as a, a accepted value that's, that's not certain but slightly uncertain based on how far a measurement may be. The precision is based on the, uh, the tool that's used to, to make the measurement. For example, a centimeter ruler would give you precision to the hundredths place. Uh, on the other hand, a vernier caliper would give you precision to the thousandths place. Many of you coming from chemistry probably use the triple beam balance or a quantitative balance. And the balances that are more exact would have more decimal places that you're certain of. Remember, you're always certain of the value that's one away from that last number. So in the centimeter measurement, a measurement of 2.54, that 4 would be your, we'll call it the imprecise or guesstimated value. Um, as far as a triple beam balance, you'd have the same precision, so it'd be the hundredths place, but then you could have balances that could measure out to the thousandths or maybe even ten thousandths. In chemistry, it's important that you have exact values when measuring chemicals um, so that you don't have too much or too little of a, of a chemical so that the reaction occurs uh, properly at the right rate, at the right uh, safety level, etc. So it's important that precision, which is the number of significant figures, versus the accuracy, which is how close you are to your accepted value, are used in the same way in our everyday language, but uh, in science, they do have different values. Now let me give you an example um, of accuracy versus precision. Uh, I typically use my classroom as a value for accuracy versus precision. And I, and I say that um, Mr. P, myself, I'm located in the United States. Now that is an accurate um, value. I'm in the United States right now in, at my house. I'm in the United States when I'm in, in my classroom as well. Now that may not be very precise because it's hard to locate me in the United States. Um, it will be hard to know exactly where I am because the United States is a pretty big landmass. And if we just talk about the 48 states, um, we, you know, we go across 3,000 miles um, from one coast to the other. Now, let's still be accurate, but also give a little more precision. I am located in New York State, which is in the United States. Now, that pinpoints my location more precisely still accurate. How about I'm in Schenectady County when I'm in my classroom, which is in New York State, which is in the United States. If we want to go broader, we could even say I'm on the continent of North America. That's also accurate. I'm on the Earth. That's more accurate. Um, 
I'm in the Milky Way galaxy. That could be accurate, but not very precise. Now, if we keep increasing the precision, uh, when I'm in my classroom, I'm in Scotia, which is in Schenectady County, which is in uh, New York State, which is in the United States. And if we keep going to more precision, I'm standing in front of my classroom, which is located in the, the D wing, uh, room D4, standing in front of my students at a specific location in the room, discussing whatever topic we happen to be discussing at the time. Every one of those values had a level of accuracy. I was correct in each one. The precision, however, as we went forward, became more precise, more exact. We were able to pinpoint my location uh, more precisely. If we used a GPS, it would allow me to figure out the latitude and longitude to the thousandths or ten thousandths place to certain precision. So um, even GPS technology could give you precision based on how accurate, uh, I'm sorry, how, um, how many decimal places we have. Every one of the values on the GPS will be accurate depending upon if it's commercial grade or military grade, but then the precision will change. Commercial grade may get me down to uh, a few meters. Military grade GPS may get me down to the, uh, to the centimeter or millimeter. So each one of those values would be accurate, but depending upon how pinpointed, if you will, my location is, that will tell me different levels of precision. Now that completes our discussion of um, the metric system and it completes our discussion of accuracy and precision for today. Thank you.